Well, I, I'm certainly uh, positioned for that to, to occur. Uh, personally, I own AMD and I also own LAM Research. I've owned LAM Research for a very long time. But uh, my quality momentum index, when we look at the industries, semiconductors are where we have the actual largest exposure. Now, I think what's going on here, Frank, is because of some better numbers related to the Delta variant, you are beginning to see a revival in demand. And that's important. I know the concerns have been on the supply side, but even a modest revival in demand is going to kind of negate some of the negativity and pessimism that surrounded the market in uh, the earlier weeks. That directly affects semiconductors. Josh Brown has done a great job on this show talking about how semiconductors really are the new transports when you're looking uh, at the market. So I think that would be the first place that we're going to see that demand recovery uh, witnessed. And certainly in the last couple of days, we've been seeing that. NVIDIA breaking out. LAM Research, uh, as I said the other day, down by its 200-day moving average. That is just a fantastic point of reference to lean against to establish a position if you don't already. Jim, I see you own Qualcomm and NXP. What's your take? Yeah, so uh, just extending what Joe said and, and in reference to Josh Brown's comments, this uh, semiconductors are what steel, railroads, oil uh, were to the economy 70 years ago. It's, it's in everything. You can see it. One area of ground zero is autos, which right now, if you drive past any dealership, it looks like the lot is basically empty because of the desperate need for chips to go into cars. Um, notwithstanding what Joe said, the supply chain issue is far greater than any demand uh, uh, variation over the past few weeks. But look for those supply chain issues to start to ease over the coming months. It won't be all at once. It will take time. Uh, but supply chain, uh, excuse me, supply chain uh, shortages are getting eased up. And what I look for is NXPI is a great play into that automotive sector that I already referenced. I'm going to throw a bone to Steve Weiss and bring up Qualcomm. This is obviously one of the mobile telephony plays. He and I have a slightly different view on it, more than slightly. Uh, but ultimately, this is a cash flow machine. And if the stock doesn't pick up, the company will buy back shares. They have a habit of doing so, especially when cash balances grow too high. So Qualcomm, you've got to be patient and stay with it. Weiss? Well, first of all, the supply chain, we're going to have to disagree there because in talking with some of the companies that I just mentioned, they said the supply chain has not picked up. As a matter of fact, it worsened a little, and we know that from the closing of the ports in China, which reopened overnight. So maybe they will ease up. Jim's not used to being in front of the ball, so, you know, hopefully he'll get this one right. <laughs> Look, in terms of Qualcomm, it, it's just uh, it, it's the company that everybody hates to do business with in technology. Uh, because they have strong arm tactics and you don't have to do business with them anymore. You've got media tech, you've got other options there. As a matter of fact, Apple is building their own chipset. So once the take or pay deal with Qualcomm as part of the settlement rolls off, they won't have to do business with them anymore. Look, Qualcomm has been a laggard. Um, so Jim's investment style continues to be consistent. I prefer to go with Skyworks and Corvo, <laughs> which are doing quite well and will continue to do well and benefit from the pickup in mobile phones. By the way, 5G phones have more than doubled their market share to about 43% this year. And that's where you want to play. That's Skyworks. That's Corvo.